a screen or you, you do? I will share my screen first for that introduction. So you can, I don't know if you want to Next mute yourself okay, okay. and then I will hand it over to you in yes, thank you. three or four minutes. Mm. Aputi. Okay. <laughs> Let's get started. Welcome everyone to the penultimate seminar of the season. So today we have Yasuo Ogawa talking about imaging fluids in the crust, seismological and volcanological, volcanological applications. But before I hand over to Yasuo, um, I just want to remind you of the well, next week's seminar and the last one before we go into the summer break which i believe goes until september so next week we have lucy mcgregor on multi-physics analysis extracting um, the most from diverse data sets so that's certainly something i will be very interested in and i think it will be interesting uh, for many of you because she's also the seg uh, distinguished lecture, lecturer for this year. Um, and yes, as I said before, today it's, it's Yasu talking uh, about the fluids. And um, here's a bit of info Yasu gave about himself. I'm sure there's much more to his career, but he's currently working for the Volcanic Fluid Research Center as part of the Tokyo Institute of Technology. And well, as probably most of you know, his interests are in electromagnetic imaging, imaging and um, particularly, of course, being based in Japan, about subduction zones, volcanoes, and seismogenic zones. And yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing much more about this. And with that, I will stop sharing my screen and hand over to Yasu. Thank you, Max. Do you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, I will start. And um, today, my my type uh, uh, top title is imaging fluids in the crust, seismological and volcanological applications. I'm working for uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology, and the, the picture behind this uh, title is uh, uh, volcano crater lake, where we around around here uh, we have many. Uh, observational instruments like the seismogram or uh, tilt meter or such and such. <clears throat> okay, uh, today, oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. There's a pointer. Okay, so today I, I will review my own, our monitoring studies and this is a kind of a personal review so it doesn't cover everything regarding these uh, topics and first uh, I, th I will focus on the seismology targets uh, in particular on uh, interplay earthquakes and later interface at the subduction zones next and um, I will 
focus on volcanology targets and imaging geothermal system and also the uh, temporal resistivity changes. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, our colleagues and I'm, I'm using all the relevant uh, publications and uh, ongoing works. Okay, so I will start on the seismology uh, targets. And I assume that you, you all, all are familiar with magnetic and all my talks are on the imaging of those targets by magnetic method. Uh, okay, and first uh, seismology target I will introduce is the interplate earthquakes. And so that has linked with the active force on the surface and also the shear zones and the fluid reservoir and also deformation. So all, all the current tectonic components are contributing to this interplate earthquakes. And I will show some examples in Northeast Japan and uh, North Anatolian Fort, where I'm collaborating with the uh, Turkish Greeks and New Zealand. And collaborating with many GNS and other New Zealand colleagues. And also finally the volcano, I, another topic is volcano earthquake link. Okay, shall we start? Um, uh, conceptual model. So uh, if, so this is the picture of the upper and lower crust. As you know, the upper crust is brittle and lower crust is ductile and these are under the compressional or extensional stress. And if the, if the upper crust or lower crust are uniform, so the fault should take place randomly. But in, in fact, we have a specific fault traces at specific places. There should be reason in the upper and lower crust structures. And, and this is a model by EO and Kobayashi and uh, this is a local local stress model. So uh, creation of the fault is a local uh, stress concentration. And there are four models presented here. And the top two ones are, are, are tectonic stresses forcing uh, horizontally and either uh, compressional or uh, uh, extensional stress is uh, happening. And if there is a low strength zone and then is uh, in the lower crust beneath the fault, so it may uh, localize, it, it will help localize the fault. The another one is the uh, uh, fault is further uh, downward extended. So uh, these are two models. One is uh, the uh, uh, distributed distributed shear model and the other one is localized shear model. So in the previous present, uh, in, in my presentations, I show many uh, conductors in the earth. So, so that may support more like the uh, distributed shear model, which hosts the uh, uh, fluid existence, which can be detected by magnetic rubrics. Okay, so uh, as a, as a uh, driving force, so there might be a, uh, drag force under the uh, under the uh, moho with the mantle flow. So this is another uh, uh, driving force model. Okay, with this in mind, so uh, so what we are going to see is the uh, uh, localized uh, uh, no. Uh, a, a fault, a fault model with a specific underlying uh, resistivity structures, in particular fluids. Okay, and this is a fault valve model, which is often referenced as a source of, of the earthquake generation process. And the uh, so the idea is that the there is a two domains and the. Uh, we can say that this is a ductile regime and the brittle regime. <clears throat> this here is called it is the seismogenic zones. And so this model, uh, if the, with this model, uh, fluid is in, injected into the upper seismic regime and then produces uh, earthquakes. And this is 
Uh, this model was basically made from the geological observations on, of the uh, gold, gold veins, but this is, this, uh, we are seeing that this model can be applied to geophysical, uh, current geophysical model on the seismogenic transmogenesis. And in the upper figure, we have the uh, pressure as a function of depth and the shear resistance as a function of depth. And as you see here at the fluid pressure uh, to the, uh, the seismogenic zone will be in a uh, hydrostatic and this slope is, is proportional to the, the density of the, the, uh, the fluid itself. However, under this, uh, uh, under this uh, seismogenic region, so it may go into the ductile region and then there the static uh, fluid pressure should be uh, rhizostatic. And, and, but this model needs a steel zone at the interface. Okay, okay so uh, what we are seeing very often is uh, this kind of picture and we have below the brittle ductile zone, we have the conductor and the seismogenic zone is, uh, is above it. And for this seal, uh, recently uh, Sai Shu et al. Uh, published a paper but that the solubility of silica is controlling this boundary and the sil uh, silica solubility uh, breaks, uh, breaks down and, and precipitation occur at around 40, 400 degrees C. And this, this temperature, and also the uh, mechanical uh, property boundary coincides very well. Okay, so uh, now we, we, I can show, I will show some example in Northeast Japan experiment. And this is the Jap Northeast Japan uh, map with the volcano in red and also the uh, active faults. And in this region, uh, we, have, we see a high angle, there are many high angle reverse faults, which are causing disastrous earthquakes in the historical time. And, uh, and, and this, this, is, uh, this red line denotes the uh, volcanic Front, what we call volcanic front, the volcano line up in this line, and, and the upper upper figure shows the uh, section of this area, typical section, and, and was, uh, subduction of the Pacific plate is taking place, and the fluid released from the plate, and uh, it's coming up to the uh, the crust. Okay, and some may create uh, melts in the back back side. Okay. Uh, uh, so this this area has a very uh, specific, uh, unique uh, tectonical setting, and uh, so Japan uh, be before the Miocene was located at the edge of the uh, Eurasian continent, and and rifted apart in the Miocene, and this was of the. Uh, evidenced by the uh, 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 paleomagnetic study. So Japan Sea open, so uh, in the Miocene, so if you look at this picture below, and so there was an extension, uh, so Japan was under the extensional regime and normal fault was created at Japan Sea opened. And however, that's, uh, currently, so it is under the compressional uh, tectonic uh, environment because of the subduction of the Pacific Plate. And so the Japanese uh, island is uh, shortening. But the same the key point is the same fault is used. Uh, uh, so the, the one which was previously a normal fault was used uh, working as a reverse fault. And this is called uh, inversion tectonics. And so it is uh, with this in mind. And uh, so those, those uh, for high angle faults 
reverse folds are previous reverse are normal fold created by the Japan Silk team. Okay, and then uh, I will show some examples for a prof two, two profiles crossing a major uh, disastrous earthquake. Okay, so this is the first one. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, back arc, uh, backbone range in the central part of the island. And this is the uh, back arc side. And the, so this is the topography, this shows the topography and the uh, central part is uh, uplifted. And on both sides of the, uh, the mountain, there is a reverse, high angle reverse fault. And you may notice that the red dots, uh, these are uh, epicenters of the earthquakes and line up as a, uh, has a linear distribution here and also here and also here. And uh, no historical earthquakes of magnitudes uh, seven class ones are located here and here. And from the mechanical uh, mechanism study, so the old, large earthquakes and the recent uh, earthquakes uh, have the same same uh, mechanism. So the uh, same same thing is happening uh, after 100 years. And <clears throat> okay, so if you take the magnetic section, uh, this is the result of uh, the 2D inversion. Uh, and what we see is the conductors in the mid crust at, at three uh, separate locations. And the seismic hypocenters are located along the edge of these, uh, those uh, conductors. Okay. So this means that the, the fluid is maybe migrating into the, the uh, less, uh, resistive upper crust and creating the uh, earthquakes. And in this back, in this backbone ranges, we also have the uh, seismic uh, experiment, uh, uh, natural uh, seismic observations, and then seismic reflectors are mapped as uh, stars, and those are distributed on the conductive uh, anomalies. So, so, so from this picture, we can say that uh, we see high seismicity around the rim of the crustal conductors and that may be a distribution of fluid. This is another section and the, the second fly in, in another place, which is called Northern Miyagi area. And in this area also, this is a 2D profile and we have the clear uh, crustal conductors and shallowing towards the east. And just above these conductors, we have the seismic, seismic uh, activities and this is also consistent view that the uh, fluid reservoir is located at mid crust and and just above the conductor so there are uh, seismic activities so so this also uh, uh, is consistent with the uh, fault bulk model of Simpson okay, so now if we turn to uh, Turkey, and we have collaboration with Turkish colleagues and uh, there is a 1600, 1600 long uh, strike three fault, which is known as North Anatolian fault. And this fault is, has, uh, has a seismic activity mig migration from east to west and uh, last activity in 1999 had, uh, are uh, the two uh, large earthquakes in Izmit, Izmit earthquake and also Duji earthquake. And also uh, in 1920, uh, there is also a, a, a large earthquake here. And so uh, between these uh, large fault uh, segments which ruptured, there is a, a seismic gap. So. There is a potential there. Does this this gap may uh, rupture in, in the future? So, so to understand this uh, fault system, we also we did uh, multiple 
profiling and also the three dimensional uh, uh, measurement of magnet derricks. So this is the compiled sections of the past to the profiles from west to east. And the interesting is that the, we have the uh, conductor in the mid crust consistently uh, under these uh, fault zones. And uh, in fact, that the surface trace of uh, the North Antonio fault branches into two, NAF1 and NAF2. However, the conductor seems to be located just in between. And the conductivity of the uh, resistivity, uh, 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 low resistivity is in shown in red, and there is a very high uh, low, low resistivity zone, and and, and there are also uh, 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 along strike variation. You will see along strike variations, and the the area we have the rupture is more more resistive compared to the uh, western end of the profile. So this may this, this modeling may show the segmentation of the earthquake fault. And so, uh, and the, uh, if you know, if you can know that segment, we can tell the uh, magnitude of the future earthquake and it's important. And, uh, extension of this, as an extension of this work, we have, uh, we have uh, sites in the seismic, sites, uh, seismic gap area, but uh, this is under under the sea. Uh, we have uh, collaboration with JAMSTEC and we deployed uh, many ocean bottom magnetometers. And uh, these are results of the three dimensional inversions. And we, we, was, we, we have seen that there, there is a uh, segmentation just in the northern part of the, uh, uh, this, this, this part of the uh, fault. Uh, is more resistive, so there is a potential that this may uh, rupture as a uh, as a segment. Yeah. And we we are also uh, we are collecting more data around onshore onshore data, and we are improving this model currently. So another topic is the. Uh, uh, New Zealand uh, Alpine fault and also uh, 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 parallel faults uh, in the front, front uh, uh, forward side of the Hikurangi, end of the Hikurangi subductions. And this is a collaboration with Americans, New Zealanders, and uh, uh, myself. And uh, the yellow dots shows the uh, empty stations. And, uh, Mostly, so uh, the, because of the Hikurangi uh, subduction is oblique, and there are, uh, so it will create a, a strike sweep faults in the fork part, and also in the back side, there is a reverse fault, which created a large uh, earthquake, like uh, the Japan, Japanese uh, reverse fault earthquake. Okay, so uh, this shows the, uh, uh, resistivity section and uh, horizontal axis distance for 200 kilometers and uh, uh, depths to 100 kilometers <clears throat> and the line is moho. So, uh, so what we see is the conductor uh, uh, like this yellow, yellow color. And uh, these are under each of the major strike sweep faults. And uh, seismicity uh, hypocenters are, are displayed as uh, plus symbols. So this means that there is a fluid reservoir and uh, underneath the fault line, fault underneath the fault, and above above this <coughs> conductor, these are the uh, seismic zones. So this is, is the, what we we had yeah, the, the fault bulk model, as I showed in my last in the previous slides. <clears throat> and uh, significantly large uh, fluid is coming in the backside and where we have the uh, uh, reverse fault system. <clears throat> so the, this is a cartoon and and for the uh, in the in the 
far side from the subduction. So we have a large column of fluid coming up and the reverse fault system, high angle reverse fault system is usually uh, difficult to uh, activate, but with fluid, uh, because the fluid will reduce the uh, effective normal pressure, uh, normal pressure and uh, the, yeah, the fault can rupture easily. So this is the, uh, so these are examples in, in the, uh, the strike system and, uh, okay. And then I uh, move to another topic and then I, I will show recent uh, Japanese work on the volcano earthquake link. And so, so uh, I'm talking about Iwate Miyagi Nairiku earthquake, which, uh, which took place in 2008 with magnitude 7.2. This earthquake is very unusual in the sense that it took place near the volcano. Usually the volcano, near the volcano, the geosum is high and, uh, and there are thin, uh, the, the seismogenic uh, zone is thin. So usually uh, uh, it is difficult to, to have a large earthquake, but this happened in a strange, strange way. So this is the result of the resistivity structure for the depth of five kilometer rise. And the right one is 10 kilometer one. And as I said before, the triangles are of quaternary volcanoes. And this is a, one of the most active volcano in Japan, the Kurikoma volcano. And at five kilometer depths, we, we have we, we see some conductor here labeled as C1. And in this picture, we also see the uh, uh, hypocenters as a star here. And in this map, uh, we also plotted the uh, aftershocks. And aftershocks are distributed clearly in the resistive zone in this map. Okay. And interestingly, so this C2 area is uh, close to the hypocenter, but the earthquake did not uh, occur. So, so now you see a C1, C2 are separated, but if you come to 10 kilometer depth, so it is connected. That means that the fluid is fluid and the hypocenters are connected. So uh, if you write the button, so this is uh, volcano Mount Kurikoma and uh, the fluid is coming up and branches at some level around 10 kilometer to one to Kurikoma volcano, the other to the hypocenter. So with the, uh, the supply of fluid from, the, from this volcano branching <clears throat> and this, this, uh, 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 this uh, large earthquake could happen. So, uh, so, so I think that the, uh, the volcano has volcano can work also as uh, to to make a uh, source fluid to create a large earthquake. Okay. And for this for this earthquake, uh. uh uh, core seismic and post seismic slips are very well defined. And, and uh, this picture is uh, resistivity distribution on the fault plane. And, and the left one, uh, the contour shows the core seismic slip distribution. That the core seismic slip is la largest here and smaller to, to the end, towards the end. And you will see that the resistive part is, has a large core seismic slip and conductive, it, it is avoiding conductive part. And if you plot the post seismic slip, so uh, you will see the post seismic slip is large near the volcano and uh, also to the northern, to, to the north, there is another area which has a large uh, post seismic slip. 
and which is also conductive. However, so there are two, two places which are ruptured but resisted. So, uh, so uh, for the post-seismic sleep, there are two types of things. And one is the uh, uh, conductor, which work as relaxation, relaxation of the uh, cause uh, the the stress which was accumulated by the this seismic event. The other one is uh, is uh, rupturing, which should which was not ruptured at the same same time as the main shock. So uh, so by by making detailed uh, uh, resistivity mapping, we can uh, we can relate seismic uh, so such a ge geodetic information into resistivities. Okay. So this is half half of the seismology target. And next I will introduce some uh, uh, plate interface issues. And first one is on the New Zealand case and next one is Southwest Japan. And uh, it's a collaboration with uh, GNS. And uh, I will introduce this paper. And Vivke has already published many papers on this. And you may, you may have seen. Uh, this is the re uh, most recent one. And, uh, uh, and uh, this, this is a map of New Zealand. And this is North Island and South Island and the North Island. The, there is a Hikurangi subduction, and it is known, but the northern part, the plate is uh, weakly coupled, and, but the southern part is strongly coupled. So this picture in blue and red shows the coupling coefficient uh, determined by the, the geodesy. And you will see that the northern part is, is uh, strong, strongly, uh, weakly coupled compared with the south. Okay, so in the, the previous studies, so uh, it was already known, but the northern part, of the, the plate, inter, plate interface is conductive compared with the, the, the southern part, which is which coincides with this uh, uh, coupling coefficient distribution. But if, if the fluid is really contri controlling the coupling, so there should be a transition uh, corresponding to this uh, transition of the coupling. So that was the, the objective of this study. And we, uh, we set up 160 stations in two years. And this is the map of this area. Okay. And um, uh, so uh, the 3D inversion was done using Virachai Shiripan Barapon's code. And uh, this is the initial model, which takes into account of the plate uh, distribution uh, plate. And however, but the top of the five kilometer of the plate is, is set free as an initial, uh, initially, so, uh, Aside from the uh, uh, statement distribution and plate, uh, so uh, everywhere is, is starting model has 100 ohm meters, and the lower one has the, the best fit model, and you will see from the south to north the con the resistivity decreases uh, up above the plate. Okay, so this is the the feature we, we are expecting. And, uh, and if you map the plate interface, uh, with, uh, this is the resistivity of the plate, plate interface. <clears throat> and the uh, uh, southwestern part has uh, a resistivity close to 300 ohm meters. In contrast, the, the uh, Northeast ones uh, uh, has the uh, uh, 
resistivity uh, like uh, several hundred, several ohm meters, several, several tens of ohm meters. <clears throat> so in the same picture, so the counter is uh, uh, drawn, and this shows the aerial strain rate, and uh, that means that the that uh, means that the blue ones are, are more coupled because uh, this this uh, blue one uh, uh, means that the plate plate interface is more strongly uh, strongly coupled, and uh, the red one is weakly coupled. So uh, this counter is very well uh, is, is very much well coincide with the distribution of uh, aerial strain rate. So we confirm that the plate coupling may be controlled by the fluid distribution. Yeah. A similar subduction, low angle subduction zone is, uh, is in Japan and this is uh, Southwest Japan. And now uh, the, the Philippine Sea plate is subducting under the Eurasian. And uh, the angle of the subduction is similar to the one in, in Hikurangi subduction. And so it is this, in this place we can see uh, the plate interface from the land observation. So in this area, so subduction is taking place and uh, uh, there are no uh, historical. Uh, a large earthquake ruptured area in, in this, uh, 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 this areas, three areas, <laughs> and, and uh, also the, uh, the red dots represent deep low frequency tremor, and this this tremor was found first time in the world, one of the place in, in, was, it was found in, uh, in, in uh, Cascadia and also the, the, in this area, uh, the non-volcanic tremor was found. <clears throat> and so uh, our target area is here. here. And, and uh, for the geometry of the plate coupling, we have the uh, mega thrust asperity is here, and uh, that is uh, corresponds to these uh, rupture areas. And uh, uh, adjacent area, like a shallower part and deeper part, uh, has uh, less coupling and it's a source of the non volcanic tremor and also a shallow, low volcanic, uh, low, low volcanic. Uh, uh, VLF. Uh, VLF earthquakes. Excuse me. Okay, so uh, we we took measurement in this area and made a three D model, and then this I uh, can show us the slices of the area and um, from three kilometer to forty kilometer. In this model, uh, so we fixed the Philippine Sea plate uh, plate as a. Uh, then, uh, thousand ohm meters, and so you will see the blue uniform place here. And uh, in this area, so we have a resistive, resistive, huge resistive block in the four arc, uh, which is labeled as R1 here. And so this is a key feature, and which may, which corresponds to the large batteries which was created in Miocene. Uh, uh, because that the uh, uh, can see plate has some rich system and which which uh, because uh, during the time of the Japan sea opening, so the Japan Japanese island over overridden on the ridge, so that's why we have the huge uh, batteries, and uh, that may correspond to R one. So uh, this is the ten kilometer depth uh, slices, and there is a resistive body here. And if you make slices in this direction, uh, one, two, three profiles, and we will see that the plate is subducting and above there is a R1, uh, which, which was mapped here. And also another profile, another profile. So 
And if you also, we, in this picture, we plot the uh, normal earthquake and also the non-volcanic tremors. And, and you will notice that non-volcanic tremor in, uh, shown in white dots are located uh, adjacent to a our, our little bit away from the uh, from this uh, bathless body. So uh, if this bathless body is, is controlling the coupling, so we will you, we we can expect that the uh, the weak uh, weakly coupled area uh, defined by this uh, tremor is is consistently located. So if you release the, the plate constraint, we see the similar thing, but at the, anyway, so the uh, resistive structure underneath the plate is not very well constrained. Okay, so uh, this is all for, this was all for the, uh, my presentation for seismology. And so I move on to volcanology targets. So uh, for volcanology target, I, I show some geothermal system uh, and also the temporal resistivity changes. The first topic is Ksatsirane Volcano, Japan, where we have uh, many uh, observational network. And uh, we there was a, a, a volcanic unrest in 2014. And we expected that it may erupt, but it didn't. But uh, during the uh, during this event, we have some many, many uh, uh, geodetical and seismological or uh, heat uh, discharges, and so uh, so uh, for uh, MT measurement in this area and three D modeling will reveal those uh, relations very well. So I present this. Uh, uh, because um, uh, for, there was a uh, 2014 volcanic unrest and then uh, horizontal axis is time and this is March for 2014. And the, uh, the upper one shows the daily seismicity and the lower one is the uh, tilt record located at the three borehole stations, uh, uh, which is uh, Surrounding the volcan volcanic edifice, and in, in 2014, and the, the earthquake started. Uh, uh, many earthquakes started to occur, and then uh, the, at the same time, the volcano started to inflate. And at the start of the inflation, the uh, seismicity was high, but then and became less significant. And it it, it, uh, it continued uh, one year and a half. Okay, so um, we know that the tilt rec we we have the tilt record, and we can make a, a simple uh, point source uh, model, and we can locate the pressure source as a point here near the near the uh, crater lake. Okay, and. Uh, for understanding this uh, uh, volcanic unrest, we made a 3D MT inversion to understand the architecture of the, the, uh, the volcano system and unrest. <clears throat> and this is a map view of uh, at the uh, 1400 meter above sea level. This is 600 meter view surface. And you will see the surrounding, surrounding conductor around the, around the peak. And this is, in fact, if you if you take the north south cross section, it is obviously see you see this uh, curved bell shape conductor, and this is it's like it's going around the volcano, but not perfectly circular. Okay, and if you focus on this and, and this X mark, which is a source of the source of the uh, inflation is located just below the gray uh, conductor, which I we interpret as gray cap, and which is in, impermeable and conductive. So, so this this inflation can be easily explained by this uh, accumulation of fluid or gas underneath this cap. And also, uh, we have the micro earthquake activities uh, from uh, uh, 
it, it, these are dots, you, you see the dots are micro earthquake hypocenters and they're distributing between these two conductors. So that means that the fluid cannot migrate into the, the, the clay cap to uh, induce uh, seismicity. And uh, important thing is this deep, deeper conductor. So which we, we think is, uh, this is underneath the uh, seismic activity. So we, we think it's, uh, it's uh, uh, more than 400 degrees C uh, fluid. So that may be a uh, supercritical fluid. So this is, uh, B is the section of the east-west and it's more complicated, but so basically we see the same thing. And uh, so uh, this is a cartoon of the uh, previous slide and uh, the fluid is migrating uh, from below. And uh, we think that there should be a silica cap here, which is not seen by the MT itself. But uh, uh, and, and if, if this is broken and that fluid or gas will be released into the upper part and produce size, uh, earthquakes and it accumulate at the, the, uh, the ceiling of the, the structure and then produce uh, inflations of the volcano. So uh, if you know the uh, temp temperature from this uh, fluid distribution and also the bottom of the clay cap as 200 degrees, and if you know the depth scale, so we know the pressure and also the uh, temperature uh, indirectly, and then we can plot the uh, uh, we can plot this uh, the condition of the area, like the in, just inside of the silica cap here. You may you may have uh, plot here, and then if it breaks down, and so it it becomes a uh, uh, hydrostatic and it, it comes to this position. And then uh, the uh, if you have some uh, fluid and just underneath the uh, recap, so that may be plotted here. So uh, so with, with this in mind, we may uh, get an idea about, of the uh, phreatic eruption architecture. Okay. So regarding the silica cap at the brittle ductile transition, so there is a uh, deep well in Japan, which is, uh, is called WD1 in Pakonda area. And this well go, goes in, be, goes, went beyond the brittle ductile transition. And this is a temperature profile. And then if you uh, come to uh, something like two, three kilometers, and it becomes uh, conductive. So, so there must be a, a seal here and uh, under, under here is a conductive, primary conductive zone and above is a hydro convectional zone. And to, to make a seal, so uh, quartz solubility is, uh, is expected from this temperature. And so, so if you look at this fault line and, uh, and so salinity goes down abruptly at, at the 400 degrees. So this is this is a reason for uh, the seeding of, of the silica is created. Okay, so, so uh, this, this paper is uh, talking about formation of brine densities and uh, so if magma magmatic fluid flow comes in and there, if there is a high permeability conduit so there will be a lens of conductor, lens of uh, the brine will be created and it will last quite a long time. And so this, this mechanism may support the existence of, of a very uh, deeper conductor, which was labeled, labeled as 3-3 in my case. And there is also a profile model presented by Brundi. And so, so, so for make a uh, profile, upper uh, deposit. So this paper is, is uh, showing that there should be two phases. One, to make a brine, lens, brine lenses, and the next stage is a, uh, the gas injection by the uh, juvenile mafic, mafic intrusions. So uh, I think our, our volcano is in this stage and the, with the brine and the, the deeper gas is coming in. So next, uh, 
I briefly uh, introduce uh, temporal resistivity changes, uh, topical te temporal resistivity changes, and uh, so I, first I talk about uh, MT monitoring, and I was also thinking about control source monitoring, which we are now going on, we are doing, doing, carrying out. But uh, today I don't, I don't introduce this. And uh, for MT monitoring, so I show some example from Sakurajima volcano by Aizawa et al. And also here et al. In this uh, New Zealand example. And uh, for temporal resistivity changes, there are many papers uh, presented by uh, Australian colleagues, and uh, mainly on the engineering uh, purposes. Okay. So in this presentation, uh, first I show Aizawa et al. And this, this is a, a continuous empty measurement in Sakurajima volcano, Japan. So this is southern part of Kyushu. And the volcano is, um, uh, is very, uh, has a Vulcanian type eruptions. And it's, its activity is very highest in Japan. And this is a, a, a crater area. And the two stations, uh, empty stations are set up. And please note that this 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 is in a small island, and this side is close to the volcanic vent, and this side is close to ocean. So that is a key issue for the interpretation. And uh, so this is a time series time series of uh, many geophysical measurement, and let let us focus on this tilt record and tilt record and uh, this. Uh, in, uh, towards the volcano uh, conduit. So, uh, so this tilt record, uh, uh, please note that the, uh, the horizontal axis is days, days, okay. So, so there are some uh, active, active events which show the tilt of the, tilt of the ground, which shows the, uh, uplift of the cones, so that means magma intrusion. So, uh, so these vertical lines are uh, maybe uh, maybe a typical uh, uplift event. Okay, so so you will see up, 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 and like this, and corresponding to this, and two stations up, uh, similar uh, resistivity. Uh, this is apparent resistivity uh, of particular uh, frequencies, but uh, uh, has uh, corresponding changes. And this station is, is uh, a positive correlation, but this has a negative correlation. And this is because that uh, uh, volcanic fluid is coming in and this side, uh, the groundwater is is uh, more resistive. So the, if the volcanic fluid comes in, so up and resistivity goes down. However, the, this site is near the ocean. So uh, the, uh, the groundwater is quite saline. And so volcanic fluid is more resistive than the uh, ground fluid. So uh, groundwater, so it has a different uh, trend. Okay, so this was observed, but although it's a it has a limited number of sites and limited impedance components and limited frequencies, so 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 this research shows that the TMT may be very useful to monitor the volcano. Okay, so another example is the Mount Tongariro eruption in, and published by Hiro et al. And uh, this is again in New Zealand and uh, Tongariro volcano is here. And there is a shallow conductor C3 and uh, the alteration zones. And C2 is just a particle, small part. And then C1 is a larger conductor. And an MT survey was done in 2008 to 10. And th this was before the eruption. And then the Mari eruption took place here in 2020. And then a repeat survey was done and in the red dots <clears throat> and uh, just above C1 uh, that there is a change of resistivity uh, in, inferred from the uh, uh, phase tensors, which is insensitive to uh, local galvanic effect. <clears throat> so, 
the, the result of the cartoon is here. And the top part of the deep conductor was saline, saline brine. And after the uh, eruption, it was lost and became resistive. Okay. Okay, so uh, I, I summarized my presentation here and the review of my, uh, my magnetic studies using uh, uh, many publications from, including uh, many publications from my colleagues. And, and uh, the first target was seismology and the second target was volcanology target. And uh, anyway, so I think that the te uh, temporal <coughs> Temporal resistivity changes uh, is a, it's a challenging topic, and in the in the future, so we can monitor the in particular volcano uh, by magnet theory or a control source is uh, is a challenging topic, and I'm I'm in fact is working on on this, and important thing will be removal of magnetic distortion, which can also vary with time and temporal alignment error. Uh, so if you uh, use phase tensors, magnetic sensor alignment is very critical and then uh, such error should be avoided. And uh, we need uh, very high quality data to discuss. <coughs> but, uh, but also we, we can use control source uh, method and which, with which we can get uh, high quality data even in a noisy area. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. So for those of you who haven't participated in many uh, EMINAs, please put your uh, questions in the um, Q&A boxes. I will then read them out um, so that they become part of the video that will be uploaded on YouTube. And then we can, can have a discussion. And we already have a few first questions. So from Matthew Como, very nice pre uh -huh. presentation. Ogawa-san, question. The conductive domains shown on slide 14 are very localized. Is this controlled by the local setting? Yeah, for example, lithologi uh -huh. lithological structure or other mechanisms? 14, excuse me. 14. Uh, uh, uh. Here? Well, that's slide 14. Uh, oh, 14, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so he's asking about the localization of those conductors and whether that's <laughs> due to lithology or what controls the, that localization. I see. Ah. Uh, I have no idea about this localization. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's certainly some interaction with the faults, but yeah, you, I mean, that you talked about. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, I. I uh, so for for the moment, so there, so I cannot, I cannot. Uh, get any information uh, what is happening uh, to create those local anomalies mm. Mm. but it can it can so uh so um, so the fluid fluid can be uh maybe uh, migrated from below and however so so from this empty model so i have no evidence yeah, of course, you would need a um, sort of a geological map and then uh, sort of see what the relation to surface geology is or some mm -hmm. or drilling is probably it's too deep. So mm -hmm. yeah, some independent information on on lithology and composition. Okay, but Matthew has another question. Uh, yeah. Slide 21, can you discuss what causes the brittle ductal transition zone to shallow or bend upwards when fluids are below? Is this related to heat flow? Well, oh. So it is 21. Oh, 21, oh, sorry. Oh, this one, this one, this one. 
Yes, where the where the brittle ductile um, becomes shallower when you ah, the, are you talking about bending? Yeah. Ah, uh, I think I, it 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 should be controlled by the the uh, the uh, geosome, I think. But uh, this 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 cartoon is maybe uh. It, this cartoon is trying to show some capping structure, maybe, mm -hmm. and uh, this this local bending may not be seen in fact. Yeah, I guess so. I guess the idea is that um, the fluids transport heat a bit more efficiently upwards, so so you have a local heat anomaly in that. Uh, region uh, and that's why it goes uh, up. I see. Uh, I see. Uh, so if, if there is a fluid, it should transport heat more efficiently. So the brittle ductile transition should be shallower. Is that is that the question? Well, I, yeah. I mean, that's that's sort of I, I would say probably my take on this or my my mm -hmm. understanding. But that's I mean my understanding uh, of this is very very basic. So I guess it's the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether what what you think or what. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, read Phil's paper there, uh, you know, before. Uh, as far as I know, so that is maybe a new idea. And I, I think that is a very uh, interesting. And yeah, so fluid localization may localize heat transfer. So that may be, yeah, yeah, it's reasonable, I, I think. Just, just to comment, excuse me. Okay. Um... So yeah, Matthew says says thanks, and then we have Feng Jiang. Thanks for the excellent presentation. Why so many intracontinental earthquakes occurs on the boundary of low and high resistivities? Are there any exceptional cases? Mm. Yes, maybe. Uh, Yes, uh, I think it's it's also uh, one one reason is of uh, the fluid. Yeah, yeah. The question is why earthquake is taking place at the edge, edge of the conductor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I just presume that there might be a. Uh, uh, Stress, stress concentration because of the boundary of the, the material. So, yeah, and I mean, I was I was thinking about this a little bit, sort of while you were talking, because I mean, it has been seen by many people. As not only the studies you showed, but I think Michael Becken uh, saw this, or and co-authors saw this at the San Andreas Fault. Um, I saw this with some some other people in, in, in Chile and some near some volcanic system. And I guess there are two, two elements that you need for an earthquake. On the one hand, you need competent and, and brittle material so that you can mm. you can build up stress. So that would be the mm. resistors. Yes. But if it's too strong, it doesn't break. So you also need some 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 weakness. Mm. Um, and that's if you want to the conductors. And yeah, I'm also not 100% sure how those two exactly interact, yes. but I think those are the two components, right? You need something that can maintain enough stress um, that it doesn't deform continuously, but it's also something that is weak enough that eventually it, it, it'll it break at that, uh, yes, at yes. that point. Maybe a situation of, of this picture, like uh, D and uh, Low, there is a low strength zone at, at that end at, at the end of the structure weak weak material it breaks yeah yeah so you need sort of that low strength zone to some degree um, also to facilitate um, the earthquakes mm. I also have a question because you were sort of in, a, in your outlook, you were talking about monitoring uh, and yeah, some of the difficulties. Um, uh, last one. 
Yes, with the distortion and so on. And I mean, uh, I'm starting to 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 think about these things a little bit. And we, with 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 Graham Hill, we're trying to do something similar. So I'm just interested in your ideas, especially for example on the galvanic distortion. Which yeah, I, we yes, also yes, yes. I agree it is, can be varying with time, so it can mm. be a bit tricky. Mm. Yes. Um, so many people use phase tensors. That is very good to remove galvanic distortions. Yes, but but uh, for, if you make misalignment of the magnetic sensor a little bit, um, it changes things very much. Okay. So in in fact, I, I tried some. My student tried some analysis before and after the uh, Tohoku earthquake year two thousand. 11 to see if there is any tectonic changes uh, in, in the resistivity changes in the crust at a deeper part. Mm -hmm. but, but the, it seems that a small alignment of a magnetic sensor is affecting the responses very much. Okay, so how small are we talking? Like below one degree? Mm, so if so, suppose you have a very uh, uh yeah. so elongated ellipse of the phase phase tensor elongated mm -hmm. very thin not round yeah so if you make a small misalignment it change changes things very much yeah okay it will change the direction of that ellipse so you have to be careful mm -hmm. um how you sort of interpret those those changes and i suppose mm -hmm. uh one issue is that a lot of people still don't consider error propagation for the phase tensor. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I, I think it's very interesting. And there's uh, a lot to consider. And yeah, certainly that, mm. that issue of the magnetic sensor is, is, is an important one. Mm. Okay, we have another question coming in, Nadine Half. Thank you for this nice and interesting presentation. Do you know if the authors define the supercritical fluid by pressure temperature logs or only by the resistivity measurements? Uh, that's just, just kind of speculation, of course, but the, uh, for the uh, existence of... Uh, one, one, one thing is the uh, uh, cutoff depth of uh, seismicity that may correspond roughly to uh, 400 degrees. And if there is something uh, something so that, that uh, pressure may come from the depths and also the the uh, temperature comes from seismicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that, I suppose that is, nobody that is, has there is no logging uh, for empty studies. Yeah, and in this region, nobody has drilled. I, I forgot what the depth was that you showed us, and I suppose nobody has drilled that deep. Uh, there, so you don't have direct logs or direct measurements. Mm. So if there is a, a deep deep well, we, 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 we can make many nice things maybe. Yeah, but then I think if you have a, if you drill a well into supercritical fluid, um, <laughs> you probably also can, can, can run into some, some mm. trouble, but okay, that's a, that's a completely um, separate question. So it looks like you've answered all the questions. I'll just give people maybe a little bit more time, a minute or so to um, they have something, then they can, they can type it in. Not everybody is fast in, in typing. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thank you very much for this interesting presentation. And yeah, it seems like everybody is, is happy and satisfied. So then um, I will see you, or hopefully many of you next week when Lucy McGregor will talk about um, multi-physics inversion and what we can get out of that. Um, so yeah, thank you. And thank you everyone. Have a good day. Thank you.